The next topic, and I'm going to do two at once here, they're real short, leaf chlorophyll. I, do we have a chlorophyll meter here? Okay. There, right here in this box. Um, oh, wait a minute. It's in this box here. Thanks. You can pass this around. Thank you, Ben. So this is the instrument, self-contained digital readout. You clamp on a leaf, and this tells you the amount of chlorophyll in the leaf, which is particularly useful for assessing plant health. Um, and because it's self-contained, pretty easy to use. It's a, it's a useful instrument. Um, mm, this isn't going to read much right now because that's, I don't know, I'll, I can pass it around. Didn't going to read much right now because we don't have a, a leaf here. But how does this work to uh, measure chlorophyll? Let's just all the power buttons. If you hold the leaf up and, and look at it, you can tell how green it is. And if it's a thicker leaf and darker green, it's got more chlorophyll. So just by looking at it, you get a sense of that. So you shine a beam of red light through the leaf and if most of that's absorbed, that indicates high chlorophyll in the leaf. And if that was the case, we'd be done. We'd just shine light through it, and red is a wavelength highly absorbed by chlorophyll. So we could relate the transmission of red light to the amount of chlorophyll, but cell walls and all the cellulose in a leaf also absorb light. So a leaf with not too much chlorophyll, but thick and a lot of cell wall material would not transmit light. So we shine two beams of light through it, one at 930 nanometers, a wavelength that chlorophyll doesn't absorb at, and the other one that it does. And by ratioing the wavelengths, we can separate out the amount of chlorophyll from all the other material in the leaf, the structural material. And it's just, it shines through and uh, hits a detector, and then the leaf gives us a, a reading of the ratio of those two wavelengths. This is a fairly old technology. It, these meters are sold by a couple of companies. But it only gives you a relative index of chlorophyll. If we do this, if we, this would be great if we walked outside. If this doesn't need sunlight, it's got its own lights. If we had a leaf, you could, you could measure it. We can play around with it at the break. We can measure some of those leaves out there. It only gives you an index of chlorophyll. If the reading says 10 and another leaf says 5, you conclude that one has doubled the chlorophyll. That's not true. That's incorrect because it's an index and it's non-linearly related to chlorophyll. So, one of the, this, here's the wavelengths. Let me show you a couple. This is the classic transmission and reflectance signature of any plant. A little hump right here in the green, a dip in the red, and up where all the pigments are gone now over here, and that's just transmission of the, uh, non-pigmented wavelengths, the cellulose. Um, that's, every time we do tr reflectance, we're looking for subtle changes in the slopes of these lines. So this just measures 991, 653, and the ratio of these is called the chlorophyll concentration index. That's the, the not, not in this meter yet, but this is 7.5, and the bigger the number, the more chlorophyll. So now we look at the index for chlorophyll measured by this meter and the actual chlorophyll. You take a sample of the leaf, extract the chlorophyll, measure it in a spectrophotometer in the lab with the cellulose gone, and these are curved lines. They're always curved for all species. So. There's 7.5. Here's a difference of 10. 
This is, this is SPAD units. If you heard of it, maybe you haven't ever heard of a SPAD meter down here, but that's another chlorophyll meter. Here's the index. But the apparent difference is four, and the real difference is only three. So these are reproducible differences. So we programmed that meter in software with equations for multiple species to linearize this line. So that meter reads out in moles of chlorophyll per meter squared of leaf. The real chlorophyll on leaf, not an index for it. Um, this is a recently released product to do chlorophyll, and that's how it works with equations in software. Let's see what my next slide is. Ah, so these are the species that are programmed in, and not surprisingly, lots of economic agricultural species. Um, it also has a generic index for species that, um, that haven't been precisely characterized yet. But the difference is reading out in a physiological unit, amount of chlorophyll per meter squared rather than just some index. So for physiological studies, we're really interested in that. Interpretation of the data is interesting because High chlorophyll doesn't always mean high plant health. Um, in low light, plants can make a lot of chlorophyll to have dark green leaves to capture every photon they can. Um, but its single biggest use in agriculture is to look at nitrogen status of plants. When plants start to get incipient nitrogen stress, chlorophyll is one of the first things to go and the leaves start to get slightly less dark green and this meter can detect those and tell people it's time to fertilize your crop. Our eyes are so keenly attuned to color that our eyes are great monitors of color. Any one of us could walk outside and say, hmm, these plants are a little bit more green than these, just barely, but I can see it. And we would all agree. So if we picked two leaves and we said, this one is greener than this, why would we need a meter if we can see the difference in color? Now put them behind your back. But it all changes. It all changes. Whether there's no comparison. It, 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 exactly. You, you literally can do this. You put them behind your back. Now which leaf is that? Oh, I can't remember. Give me the other one to compare it to. <laughs> we have no memory for color. We just have an exquisite ability to compare it. And especially day after day, you're measuring this and you see the chlorophyll getting slightly downhill. Um, that's the, the value of a chlorophyll meter. Is, and not only does it digitize it, so anybody anywhere could use the number, but it also is memory for tracking it over time. Um, this is, I might go back to this slide. This one here, even, even this picture without the, all this. This is related to remote sensing. Because even though this is the transmission of light going through a leaf, when you think of the optics of what happens to light hitting a leaf, if we draw it here, uh, here's the cross section of a leaf with a bunch of cells in here. Here's some, some light coming in. The wavelengths, and I might draw this this way, the wavelengths that are transmitted are the same ones that are reflected. So reflectance and transmission of lights are basically the same process. Once that photon bounces off a surface, some bounces up and some bounces down, but the, the signature for reflected light is the same for reflectance as it is for transmission. So they're like, mirror images of each other. If you use a spectral radiometer and put it on top, you get this exact same shape of a curve for reflected light. This one just works a little bit better by doing transmitted light. But that principle is uh, 
helpful in remote sensing too for um, measuring reflectance and transmission. I think that's all I want to say about uh, leaf chlorophyll. It's a, it's a simple uh, process. I guess because it's simple, um, it's, it's, you don't have a big learning curve to learn to use the meters. Um, and like I say, fertilizer companies sometimes have sold this meter to growers to help them tell when to fertilize. Have any of you used this meter? And here in crop production, they're, they're, they're fairly widely used commercially, and mostly for uh, fertilization scheduling of nitrogen. I think um, turf growers use the device to measure the greenness of the turf as a soil mm -hmm. moisture mm -hmm. information. Well, turf it almost always is doing reflectance. Could pretty hard to do transmission, and turf leaves are real tiny, but but it's the same concept. Of, if it's changing color, it, it can change color because of uh, moisture stress too. I say they can pick up the instrument before they can pick up the it, Yes, I agree, but it's mostly because the instrument can remember. Yeah, <laughs> it's a tiny bit less green than it was yesterday, and. We just, like I said, we had no memory for color. We just can read. Yeah. Yeah. Um, these are short sections because now that you get the principles, you can apply them to other things.